there, I'm Rafael Di Furi, and welcome back to another Friday night. I'm sure most of you who are watching this will be noticing that there's something missing this week, and that there's something maybe just a little bit strange, and the reason why there is only a an audio feed this week is because about a week ago, uh, I was cleaning up my apartment, moving some things around, picking up some heavy stuff, and I injured my back. And so for almost a week now, I've been almost unable to walk, and sitting up has basically not been happening. So <laughs> right now, I'm coming to you live from my bed. So <laughs> just to preface this video, why it may look a little different, but tonight I wanted to talk about some things that I've been reflecting on while well, lying here flat on my back <laughs> and uh, just thoughts that have been going through my mind definitely over, I guess it's getting close to 12 years abroad now that I've been away because I've done videos talking about life 10 years abroad 11 years abroad now i want to get in that 12 year range because it's getting pretty close here so just before we get too much deeper into this video a huge huge thank you to those of you who helped to make these videos possible through patreon it is because of you guys that i'm able to continue with these video audio podcasts and talk more about living abroad life abroad and italian dual citizenship. And of course, a huge thank you to those of you who've been liking these episodes and sharing them with your friends and who are also subscribed. It is greatly appreciated. Anyway, so tonight I wanted to talk a bit about the idea that a lot of people when they're first kind of looking into moving abroad, a, a search term that comes up very quickly is becoming a digital nomad. And for some, the digital nomad lifestyle can be great and it can really be a lot of fun. But I would say that there are some very major downsides that would not really ever allow me to consider it. But the thing is also you have to be careful about the countries that you select if you're looking to move to a place for a longer period of time. Because looking back on these almost 12 years now, there's the usual, maybe I wish I'd never had this job or worked for that client or dated that woman. But these are things that you just pick up and just life experiences that you have regardless of where you are. It doesn't matter if you've stayed in your home country or if you've moved abroad or gone to country X instead of going to country Y because different countries have their own positives and negatives. And looking back on all this, I know for me, the digital nomad lifestyle would have not been the right choice. But don't get me wrong here. I think there is something about the digital nomad lifestyle that has a huge positive, and that's being able to have an income that is not location dependent. When you can have that financial freedom to be where you want, then that gives you so many more options for where you would like to be, what you would like to do, how you would like to set up your own life. I can say that this is something that I'm still working on, <laughs> trying to navigate and to transition into working more digitally and working more online because uh, this is something that in the field of video production is a bit tricky. And also just to give a little bit of background on me before I get much deeper into this, I grew up in a number of different locations. We moved a lot when I was growing up. And so looking back on now part of my adult life and definitely my teenage years and childhood, I see that for me now, especially at this point in my life, I think even when I was younger, probably would have been a good choice, but I know there are times I would have gotten bored, but for now, I can see definitely that setting some roots down has a huge advantage that especially you are unable to take advantage of if you live a digital nomad lifestyle where you are going here and there and everywhere and not really calling one place home because there is something to be said for making uh, connections with people all, all over the world and having uh, friends all over the place. And this is something that I've heard a lot of digital nomads talking about, that they become a part of a community in one place or another. But the thing is, when you're part of a transient community, the community is always on the move. The, well, <laughs> maybe other than 2020 and 
at least this part of 2021 so far. And with how connected we are these days, it's definitely easier to keep up with your tribe and keep in contact with those people who make an impact on your life. But the thing is, contact is not the same thing as actually setting some roots down and actually making a place your home. And even when you're living, say, in an expat community or a digital nomad community, you're not necessarily becoming part of the place. You're becoming part of a group, yes, but that group isn't necessarily tied to the location. And to establish yourself someplace comes with, I would say, some benefits, not necessarily drawbacks, but professionally, there's something to be said for being in an area and being in a place. And this is something that even for those who've uh, considered moving abroad to Italy and teaching English here, which I would say don't make that your main fallback that don't make that your main plan if you're coming to Italy because to get to Italy as an English teacher unless you're getting some sort of university job you're probably not going to get a job that'll bring you here but anyway being in the location actually once you're here once you have your visa once you have your ability to remain in Italy then this is something that will make it easier for you to actually get the job when you're here with the boots on the ground I can't tell you how many job listings I've seen where it's necessary here in Italy specifically but also other countries that you actually need to be there and have the legal ability to work because they don't want to sponsor a visa because that also comes with a, a large level of responsibility from the, for the business or the company that is taking you on. Of course, like I've mentioned in past videos before, that if you are working for some sort of multinational company and you already are established there and you can get some type of transfer within that company and maybe even doing something similar, if not the exact same thing, then why not? Why not go for that? And depending on how important you are to that company, they may even be able to help you with the, the, the legal fees and actually sponsor your ability to get to that new country. But taking all of this into account, I think it's very important from the get-go that you make the right decision for the country that you choose. I say this because maybe in some countries you may have certain requirements for having to stay there which wouldn't work for you. Maybe military service, maybe the taxes are too high, maybe, who knows, social services or, it, or you just don't like the place. It could be as simple as that, that maybe you move to a place thinking that it'll be wonderful and that you'll have a job there and you get your life there and you get things going, but you, uh, that you see it's really not the place for you. This is actually something that happened to me and not that I had planned to be there because my plan was to come to Italy have my Italian citizenship, live my life here. But with how long everything took for me to get my Italian citizenship, I thought, okay, you know what? I'll go study in another country, take a little time there, enjoy it, why not? But not to live there, just to spend a, a year, two years maximum, just to do a little bit of studying there. There was a country that I had lived in prior to living in Italy. And this was the case for me that I had gone to study there. And so I figured while I was waiting for my Italian citizenship to get that all finished up, I thought, well, okay, so let's try this country out just for some studying. And then I'll get, pop over to Italy once it's all over, because of course it'll be done by then. Of course, like how, how could that even be a question? But that definitely ended up not being the case for me. And anyway, the longer that I stayed uh, in this nation where I had been studying, the more difficult that it became to leave. And I'm not saying necessarily because of an emotional connection, maybe more a financial one. And uh, I ended up getting kind of stuck. And you could even say also from an uh, emotional standpoint that I had developed a little bit of a, a connection with it. I've made friends and had invested myself into the place. But the thing was, I knew in the back of my mind, Italy was where I wanted to be. It's where I wanted to go. It was just, it was the natural next step. It was just the question was how I was going to make it happen. And I was in the process of making it happen, but it was a very delayed process. And the longer that I had stayed in that country, the more I realized I needed the financial ability to even purchase the ticket. But to have the financial ability, I needed to have financial stability to get even to the next day. So that meant that I needed to actually 
make a life there and live life and work there to be even able to get to that point of completing that mission, even getting to the point where I could leave. But along that journey, like I said, I developed a connection with that place. I'd made a lot of friends and and there were those emotional attachments and even in, uh, there were some financial investments that I had made into my work to even be able to continue to the next day and continue to be able to work. And even though I couldn't wait to leave the country, at the same time, somehow I ended up believing that I actually would be happy there. And even though I actually hated every second of living there, it somehow, I guess I, I, I tricked myself into making it bearable, which I guess you could call a coping mechanism. Anyway, one day, I was renewing my visa because that's also one of the most annoying things of living abroad is living from visa to visa. And the idea that you can have in the back of your mind that maybe your visa will get accepted or it won't get accepted and everything that you've put yourself into just could disappear. And that was exactly what was going to happen to me. That day that I was renewing my visa, the clerk behind the counter said that after this visa, this would be it. That was the last visa that I could renew and that I would have to change my status in the country, which meant that either I needed to become a citizen or a resident. And I had both options available to me. And a lot of you who are listening to this may be thinking, but why? That That's awesome. That's great. I mean, you know how difficult it can be to get to that point where citizenship is an option or residency is an option because having a visa to be in a country and residency can be a little bit different, like the ability to actually remain there because I was perfectly legal in that country and I had the ability to stay in that country, but to go beyond the type of visa that I had had a, a, a limit. So going beyond that point would have made some differences in my life. And I'm very grateful that I did have that option because citizenship in some respects can be a blessing that it can really open up some doors for you. On this particular visa that I had at the time, I enjoyed certain benefits of not being a citizen or or even uh, having a residency visa. For example, taxes. This was a huge benefit at the time that I did have a tax file there to be able to work. But because I didn't have a national ID card and I wasn't even able to get one because of the visa I was on, I wasn't able to actually get into their social system and to get myself registered and healthcare and these things. I had to do that all privately. And then on top, my tax situation there was that I didn't really actually have to pay anything because as long as you earned under a certain amount of money, then you didn't have any obligation to pay taxes. All you had to do was file. And that number, I forget exactly how much it was, but it was a very high number and I never even came close. But I did get to the point where I wanted to make sure that I was able to get onto the national system and be covered and have national health insurance and this and that because there were benefits to being on the national system rather than having a uh, private health insurance. And so I ended up going to the proper authority for the matter. I spoke to the clerk there and they said, no, you're, this is not possible for you You because you're not a citizen of the country. You don't have an ID and you can't get an ID. I can't, I don't have any way of entering you into the system because the thing was, and this was actually something that even looking back on it had really financially helped me and saved me was that because of my American passport and that it started with a specific uh, character that you can't start a, a, a an ID number with in that country and on top that the the passport number was too short to be an identification number for that country. It was something that, that their system actually gave them an error code if they ever tried to enter me into the system. So they said, not only are you not obligated to pay these, but I, even, I can't in, enter you into the system. So you don't have to pay these. So like, don't bother me with this. Get out of my hair. And like, you shouldn't even be thinking about this. Because I'm, but I'm thinking, well, I want to make sure that I'm covered. I want to make sure that I'm like, t- that I'm okay that, uh, if anything happens. But in the end, it just couldn't work out. So looking back on it, it 
definitely made a the difference in my ability to be able to leave the country because if I had become a citizen there, or if I had taken on residency, then my ability to leave the country actually would have been hindered because my ability to leave was tied up in my financial stability. Then why would it make sense to take on these extra payments, these extra fees that were completely unnecessary technically, even though having access to say certain doctors would have been very nice. So in the end, even though at the time it would have been very convenient to have, which in the end actually really made the difference between having to stay and being able to go. Because even there were other obligations that would have meant that basically everything that I had built up to that point would have been thrown away. All of the work that I had completed, it would just be gone. I got to the point where I had been thinking, okay, my Italian citizenship, that hasn't finished yet. And if I stay here, my business is just going to completely tank. But if I leave here, I lose my business anyway if I go on a new adventure. So why not go on a new adventure in some other country? But realistically, at that point, going back to the U.S. was the only place that really made any kind of sense. And that was the first time that after leaving the U.S. that I had actually seriously considered moving back. And this was already quite a few years after I had left. We're already talking about, say, six plus years at this point. So we're not talking about like I had just left and I'm going back. We're talking about like a good chunk of my 20s here. And then one day I got the call that I've talked about in my videos before from the Italian consulate saying, your citizenship has been finalized, you are recognized, and finally this door that I had been banging on for years and years was finally open. And this came like less than a month before I would have had to either become a citizen, applied for residency, or just completely left. So I was thinking, you know what? Forget this. This was my goal from the beginning. Forget going back to the U.S. Forget trying life in Brazil. Forget <laughs> even staying in the country where I had been. Why not finally make that jump and take this opportunity to get to my goal of where I had been meaning to be for years by that point. Like <laughs> this whole getting sidetracked for so long and getting stuck and not being able to leave. And then finally the store was open right as I had to make a decision to leave or stay or do something. So I made all of the decisions to come to Italy. I'd already been looking into it for years, but I had to make a final decision very quickly because like I've mentioned in a past video, I think even one of my videos looking back on expat life, I mentioned that wherever I landed basically had to be the place where I would be living. I, would, I didn't have the option of looking around at different places, which is something that I think is very necessary if you are seriously considering living abroad, being able to take that time to travel to a number of different places and getting a feel for them will help you to be able to get an idea of how is, how is that place connected? How is the transportation there? Are you close to airports if you need them? Or are you far away from airports if you want to be nowhere near an airport and you don't want to have any access to things because you want to just be, I don't know, out in the middle of Siberia. Although out in the middle of Siberia, you can still be pretty close to an airport, I guess, <laughs> depending on where you are. But anyway, that's beside the point. There are points where you think it would be nice to be someplace, but is it really the right choice for you? Is it really the best choice for you? Are there going to be certain obligations that come up and make it difficult for you to actually make a life for yourself there? And of course, like living a digital nomad lifestyle, you wouldn't have the same consideration necessarily for making sure that your finances are built up in a certain place because you don't have to be built up there. You could just be building up your life there without having to financially tie yourself to the place. So that's actually something that is a huge benefit to the digital nomad lifestyle and working like a digital nomad. And that was something that I had tried to build up for myself at that point, but it just never ended up working out. But what is it that you need out of your location? What is it that you need in your life? What are your hobbies? What are the things 
that are important to embrace and hold on to. Because even something that I realized when I moved away, when I left America, I, I, was, I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to embrace the new culture, try to leave my culture behind in some aspects, leave my language behind, and just really try to put myself into the thick of it. And that's something that I know a lot of expats do. Something that I had done was that I tried to really embrace a different style of living and embrace a different culture and embrace a different language. And even to an extent, forgetting about what was important to me growing up and how important certain things had been to me, ignoring them and putting them on the side just because I thought, ah, you know, I was a kid or ah, eh, who needs that? That's a thing only people in America do. But the thing is, when you grow up in a certain place in a certain way, there are certain things about it that do make an impression on you, whether you like it or not. And I know of so many people and so many expats especially and they say oh they hate the country that they're from they don't like the people there because they're all this way or they're that way or the other way but the funny thing is that oftentimes people from another country may see that individual in a similar way just because they happen to be from that place and even if that person has chosen to consciously try to ignore certain quirks, we'll call them, that could maybe be associated with people from a certain nation, they end up carrying them, even in some kind of minimal way. So yes, of course, it's very important to embrace a new lifestyle, but along the way, you can't forget who you are, where you're from, and what is important to you, even if it is something that is so simple and so ridiculous that you end up having to re-explore it at a later date just to get to know yourself better. I'll give a really crazy example here. When I was a kid, I used to love yo-yos. I could do all these different kind of yo-yo tricks. We're talking about back in the 90s when it was kind of at this, like, the, I don't know, I feel like there was this peak of yo-yo tricks. And Anyway, not that I was like the most amazing or anything, but recently, actually it was Christmas, I got, just as a gag gift, a yo-yo. And it brought me back to my childhood, thinking about the yo-yos that I used to have. What was the one? It was a Yomega Fireball. Yomega Fireball. That was an amazing Axel yo-yo. It had, anyway, it, <laughs> if you know about yo-yos, you could say that was a great one back in the day. And I was just curious. I, was, I said to myself, you know what? I wonder if they still, if this company is still around, because I know yo-yoing is not as big as it used to be, but let's see. So I hopped on Amazon and I found one of these yo-yos and now they even make better yo-yos than the great ones that, that they had when I was a kid. Yomega is still around. Now you can get, instead of a, a just a, an axle with a piece of plastic and, and metal that you have to grease up, you can now get ball bearing yo-yos. Anyway, I'm really getting sidetracked here, but this was something that to me as a kid gave me a lot of joy and a lot of happiness and was a lot of fun. And now I'm an, I'm an adult, fully grown male. <laughs> but I think it's important to re-explore those things that you enjoyed to get back to who you are, especially if you've spent any kind of part of your life trying to distance yourself from maybe a certain part or aspect of your culture or your life. And not that I've been looking for who I am or anything. I know who I am, but to maybe get reacquainted with a small portion of myself, I guess you could say. Because for me in my 20s, I basically focused on work and that's all I did. I didn't take the time to go and really enjoy things, which is probably the wrong choice during your 20s, that probably the opposite of what a lot of people in their 20s do. But that was what I chose to do because it was necessary. I had to live and work to be able to get to the next day and to be able to accomplish my goal. Now that this goal is accomplished, now I guess I can enjoy life a little bit more. But then lockdown's coming and this and that. Now the area where I live, they're talking about it's either going to be a red zone or now this new classification of dark red. And so maybe I can't get out to enjoy certain things and to explore certain hobbies. 
But I think there's definitely other ways of getting to uh, reacquaint yourself with yourself. Anyway, I'm going on a long tangent here, but I hope that maybe somebody out there who's thinking about life abroad and considering what it may hold for them. And I hope that this has been helpful in some way, because I know before I was thinking about becoming an expat, I was looking for hearing things like this from people who had been living abroad for a while. So anyway, a huge, huge thank you to those of you who help to make content like this possible on Patreon through RafaelDeFuria.com slash Patreon or Patreon.com slash RafaelDeFuria. And of course, a huge thank you to those of you who are subscribed and who like these videos and share them with your friends, these video podcasts, or even the out and about travel videos. Thank you all for sticking around my channel. These few years that I've been on this YouTube journey, part of my expat journey. And of course, as always, I'm Rafael Di Furia. Look forward to seeing you all next time. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Later.